Hi friends, in this video I will be showing what seeds are start in February. I start my seeds using three dif different methods, uh, winter sowing, and this is something that we will be doing today. Uh, I start my seeds also under the grow light, indoors, and that process I usually start um, mid-March, and also I direct seed, and that usually starts for me um, April, May, depending on the weather. I live in zone 6B, but because of the high altitude, high desert climate, oftentimes I even get frost in late May. Um, it can even happen in June, uh, although it's very rarely. So I have to be very careful when I start my seeds, especially the frost tender uh, crops. But today I will be starting my seeds using the winter sowing method. And this method works very well for me for perennial vegetables, uh, like for example, um, artichokes and asparagus, and this is what we will be starting today. As well as for uh, perennial herbs, like lavender, tarragon, and this is also something that we will be starting today. Um, or for any perennial plants that require stratification period or benefit from stratification period. Some of the benefits of winter sowing is that the seed germinates uh, when it's time, but at the same time gets some protection from elements in form of a mini greenhouse. Um, so what do you need in order to start seeds using winter sowing method? is some kind of a container that is see-through. Um, and all you need to do is kind of cut an opening um, and make sure it has drainage hole. And after you put your seeds inside, after you sow your seeds inside, um, you, can use, um, you can use a duct tape to seal it and you leave it outside. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you still need to tend to uh, those seeds and check on them to make sure that they have enough moisture, um, that they are not too hot because once the temperature starts warm, start warming up, uh, they might overheat actually, so you have to make sure that you open that dome at the right time. But the idea here is that enough moisture should get in through the opening and provide that perfect environment for your uh, plants. I've been, I've been very successful using this method for, for perennial crops, for perennial, perennial vegetables, for any, any annual crop even that I uh, grow for flowers. However, I was not successful using this method for uh, for, uh, for plants that I grow for leaves, um, like for example lettuce and spinach. Um, and I think that kind of makes sense because putting a plant uh, outside, being exposed to the elements, it creates hardy plants uh, that are used to being outdoors but at the same time put, put, puts them through a stress level. And with, some, uh, with plants like lettuce and spinach, they will want to bolt. As soon as they're stressed, they will want to produce flowers. And uh, because that's what plant wants to do, the plants wants to reproduce. So, um, so spinach, lettuce, all the leafy greens, I grow uh, under the grow lights inside the house to provide that shelter environment. So they produce a lot of leaves and don't go to flower. So let's go over the seeds that I will be starting today uh, in February. I will be starting uh, two perennial vegetables, um, artichokes and asparagus. Asparagus needs a stratification period, so the winter sowing method is ideal because the jugs, uh, the jugs will be outside. Uh, and artichokes benefit from stratification period. In addition to that, artichokes uh, need cold in order to produce flower. So if you grow artichokes as annuals and you want to have that flower the first year, winter sowing is actually a best method to accomplish that, or at least it increases your chances of artichokes flower the first year. Um, the first year they are in the ground. And then we have lots of herbs. Um, the first one is anise hyssop. Uh, this is a perennial herb that 
you mainly grow for flowers. That's why winter sowing is a perfect method. Also, we have two types of lavender. Lavender also is a perfect candidate for winter sowing because the seeds benefit from stratification, from being exposed to cold. Um, and I'm also growing chamomile. Chamomile is uh, also a perfect a a candidate for winter sowing method. Even though it is an annual plant, we are growing it for flowers. So we want it to flowers, unlike spinach and lettuce. And then we have marjoram. Marjoram is a perennial herb. It is perennial to, I believe, zone 7. Uh, so I'm really pushing, uh, pushing it in my zone. So the goal is to provide some winter protection and have this herb grow as a perennial. And I'm also growing chives. Uh, chives are also an excellent candidate for, uh, for winter sowing method because they are perennial. And also you grow them for flowers as well, uh, for both leaves and flowers. And tarragon, Russian tarragon, it is also a perennial herb that, uh, it is also a perennial herb that benefits from stratification period. And I'm also growing some flowers. I'm planning on getting bees this year, so I want to make sure that in addition to fruiting trees and, and, and vegetables and flowering vegetables and herbs in the garden, I also have some perennial flowers. So I will be starting uh, three flowering plants that I just grow for flowers. Uh, bee balm. Bee balm. Uh, I've grown this plant before and it was just covered with pollinators. And I'm also growing uh, columbine. Columbine is native to my area, so it should do very well here. I'm growing two different kinds, Kirigami and Rakima. Let me show you the first jug, how I plant it. So, so this, is, this is a milk jug, but you can use any kind of jug as long as it is uh, see-through and allows light and also has a hole that will allow moisture. Like for example, this one is from the laundry detergent. This one is a milk jug. This one is a vinegar container. So let's start with artichokes. Um, the artichoke seeds are pretty big. I don't know if I'm gonna start that many plants because the leaves actually get very big. So they, so they need a lot of room in the container. So I think I will just do maybe five. One, two, three, four, and five. And the rest I will save for later. Um, also what is important is to label. I think I already created a label. Yes, I did. So I will put a label inside the container. I will cover the seeds. Um, not too deep, but also deep enough. Uh, my soil is already moist and we have a lot of snow, so I won't water this. But if you don't get enough snow and rain, it's definitely a good idea to water it. And then I will seal this container with a duct tape. That's it. Um, I know I put a label inside, uh, but I also like to label them on the outside uh, just so I know I don't have to take a peek inside what is growing where. There you go. And I'll do that to the rest of the seeds and then I'll show you the next step. So all my jugs are ready and full of seeds. Um, I labeled each jug on the outside and also I put the label on the inside so I know exactly uh, what seeds are growing in each, each jug. Um, and this is pretty much it. I will leave them here uh, until the seeds germinate and then I will transplant the seedlings to their permanent home when they have uh, two or four uh, set of true leaves. 
and I will just check on them occasionally just to make sure that there is enough moisture in the jug and when the temperatures warm up I will um, just open the jugs so the seedlings don't overheat. And the best location for, uh, for the jugs is somewhere close to the house so you can check on them sporadically and either west or north side. Southern exposure is not ideal, uh, your seedlings might overheat or also uh, that your seeds might germinate too soon. Uh, so either west or north side is ideal and, and this is pretty much it, that this method is very easy. So let me know if you have any questions about the seeds that I started today or about this method. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.